Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Finally using the Lawn Fawn Reveal Wheel wafer dies that I've had forever. <laughs> and I have all the add-on accessories, all those things. And the funny thing is, is I used it, but I did it custom rather than using <laughs> the accessories, the add-on dies, everything that makes it simpler. I went as difficult as possible. Although again, still pretty simple. I'll show what I did here. So I wanted to make a pizza themed card. So I pulled out the Pizza My Heart stamp set that came out. I can't remember if it was last year, but it's, it came out I think a couple years ago. It's still available. I'll have links to everything, but I've had this set sitting here and it just kind of, I was just, I was looking at it and I was looking at the little pizza slices and I was like, oh, this could be fun with a reveal wheel to like make the toppings rotate. So had a rough idea in my head of what I was going to do. I started off by just stamping all the images. I just have scraps of my Nina 80 pound cardstock. I never get rid of my scraps. I use them every opportunity I can get and they're good for like smaller images like this. So I stamped everything um, and the slices I stamped more than once, but everything else I stamped once with Gina K Amalgam Black Ink and then I'm coloring them in with Copic markers. I have the colors I used as I used them listed here on the screen. And for all of the, the two pizzas and the slices, I colored the cheese. And then I took several different colors of Lawn Fawn inks and I'm stamping. There's like a whole bunch of little topping images in the set. And some of them have the inner part that you can stamp in color and then the outline. So it just kind of depends on the look you're going for. So I would stamp some of the little toppings with different Lawn Fawn dye inks. And then I would just stamp the outline with black. It just kind of tied everything together. And then some of the other ones I'm just stamping like this little, it, I think this is supposed to be a little green pepper slice. So I just kept stamping that with um, Lawn Fawn cilantro ink. And then there's a little like uh, pepperoni slices, you know, there's all kinds of little mushrooms, all that stuff. So I'm just like loading up these pizzas with just everything because I think it's adorable. And going along and just stamping all these in. And I just have the little Lawn Fawn ink cubes. So I will link to those because I used a few different little collections to get the colors I wanted for all these little toppings. So stamped everything, stamped the outlines when I needed to, and then there's a little like kind of sprinkly sort of a stamp. And I just stamped that with Lawn Fawn's Walnut ink and I would stamp it and then re-stamp it without inking it up again. Cause I was kind of thinking of how sometimes with pizzas, the, the cheese doesn't fully melt and like the pieces kind of get a little bit crusty, which I love. I love when the cheese gets a little bit crusty. Anyway, <laughs> stamp that multiple times onto all of these pizzas. So then once everything is like stamped, I'm gonna go on and finish coloring um, the pizza box and the cutter. So again, super simple coloring, just working darkest to lightest. I decided to do kind of red and green for the pizza box. It kind of played nicely with the colors of everything else. So got that colored and then I'm going to color the little um, pizza wheel here and just use cool grays for what would be the metal parts. And then the handle I actually used just the two darkest browns that I used for the crust. So like I said, for the reveal wheel, it comes with its own die, which I'll show in a minute that you can line up to put the window in the perfect place. Like it's all kind of done for you. Lawn Fawn's explained it in their videos, like no thought required whatsoever. But like I said, I wanted to do mine custom because I wanted it to reveal the inside, like the slice of the pizza. So I took the actual little scalloped reveal wheel and I die cut this from Nina 110 pound cards. Like I wanted it to be a little bit heavier. And then I sponged two shades of yellow uh, Lawn Fawn ink onto that. It was just um, butter and sunflower. Sponge it on with my uh, picket fence brushes. And I only did that rather than coloring with Copics because it was faster to sponge the ink. That took no time. Then I stamped the toppings and the little faces and whatnot, kind of giving a rough idea where I would the faces would kind of show up. And then I took my white gel pen just and added little dots and highlights and things like I always like to do. It just gives everything that little bit of extra. So I went along and did that on the reveal wheel, but I also went, well, since I had my white gel pen out, and did that on all of the, you know, pieces of pizza, the box, etc. So after the, all that's done, everything had been die cut with accordion dies, I now have the pieces to create my reveal wheel. So there was the main die there and I'm just going to show like it comes with its own little reveal window and you can see how it inserts right there. So like well thought out, you don't have to think. And then all the little add-on ones, they all insert as well. 
but I didn't want to use that. So what I did was I die cut two pieces of craft cardstock with the main rectangle die and I'm going to orient them kind of upside down. I want them to be on the left hand side because the person I was giving this card to is a lefty. So I just thought it would, you know, made sense. Just a little extra added touch. And then that die set also comes with that small circle. And to assemble it, regardless of how you do this, you just put the small circle on the, on the back and then you run just a little mini brad through both of those. And then to line everything up, it's super easy. I just put four tiny little foam squares on the back of that little circle. I'm going to peel off the backing onto those. And I'm first going to line this up with what is going to be the front of my card. Just to make sure that that wheel, you don't see any of the toppings or anything when you're turning it. So I get that lined up and then I'm going to line that up with the piece that's going to be on the back. And because I've exposed that little foam tape, everything's held into place for the moment. So I've got that held in place. That's where the wheel's going to go. Now I need to figure out where I'm going to cut the window for this piece of pizza. So I had a third slice that I had only colored the crust and the center area I am cutting out with uh, a craft knife. I'm just using my little green pen blade here. Um, you could do scissors so you could just kind of cut a piece down the center and then you know trim it out with scissors. I find I have more control with the craft knife. So I'm just going right along the inner portion of this little slice and I'm going to use my little uh, paper snips just to trim off the tiny little bits um, in the corners there. So now that I'm left with basically the outline of the pizza. I have the crust and then it's open. So I did that first and then I'm going to take my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker and I'm going to line the inside of this just to cover up that exposed white cardstock from cutting it. It just makes it look a little more seamless. So I do that and now I'm going to die cut this. And I did this all before I die cut it because it gave me more control holding that piece of that scrap of cardstock. So then it's die cut and I have this little funny outline. So I figured the easiest way to do this was I die cut a piece of transparency with that rectangle die. And I'm actually going to keep this with the die set because you never know, it might come in handy down the road for doing something similar. But I put the, the little slice of pizza on top of the reveal wheel, put the acetate, then I'm taping down the outline of the wafer die there just to give me an idea of where this is going to go. So I've got all this. Now I can line this acetate up on top of what's going to be the front of my card. I'm just going to tape the acetate into place just so that it doesn't move. And then I'm going to place that little slice right directly under that taped wafer die. So now I know where that's going to go. I'm going to trace my little opening with a pencil and that's going to create the placement for my window. So once I got that traced, I can use the pen blade again and cut out the exact same shape as what I'd cut on that little piece of pizza. So once I get this cut out, I am going to use my scissors to pop off those, again, the little corner pieces. That is one thing I'm not good with um, a craft knife. I'm always a little more hesitant on the corners. So once I've got that cut out, I now have my window for the reveal wheel. So now it's time to start actually assembling this card. So I'm going to adhere my little outline pizza slice over this window to complete it. And then I can start adhering all of the other little like companion images and putting everything together here. So I wanted to make sure I had this all kind of lined up before I did the official adhering and it worked. And I was, <laughs> I was like, yes, you know, when the idea in your head and all the fiddling finally comes together, it's like, okay, this is good. So I had stamped and heat embossed one of the sentiments onto some red cardstock. So I have that off to the side there. I used some larger little 3D foam squares. You could just use scotch foam tape for this too. After I did this, I was like, foam tape would have been faster than all those squares. You just make sure you want to place them so that they don't get in the way of that reveal wheel so it can still move like so. So now I've got the front and the back panel adhered. And now all I have to do is decorate this front panel with all the rest of my images. So like I said, I heat embossed the sentiment onto some red cardstock and I die cut that with actually one of the Simon um, sentiment label or sentiment banner dies. And I'm going to adhere that into place and then I can just flip this over and trim off the pieces that are hanging off with my scissors. And now I'm going to start adhering all the other little images that I had colored and die cut at the beginning of the video. So I figured where I wanted to kind of place everything and then um, adhere these onto my card using, I'm just using Lawn Fawn's uh, liquid glue here. 
So I'm going to adhere the rest of my little pizza slices and the cutter and the pizza box and the large circular pizza. I decided to save the heart for the inside because it's going to work kind of perfectly with the sentiment. So once I got everything adhered and kind of figured out what I was going to do, I ended up deciding to stamp this little swirl and one of the little heart outline images from the set onto this craft background. Normally I would do this before adding everything with foam tape, but it was kind of an afterthought. So thankfully everything did stamp good though. So I'm just stamping it with that same Lawn Fawn um, walnut ink just to kind of fill in the background a little bit. So stamp that on the outside or on the like card front. And then on the inside of the card, I'm inking up the next sentiment with um, Lawn Fawn's lobster ink where it says, you have a pizza, my heart. <laughs> so that's where the heart shaped uh, pizza is coming into play here. So I stamped the, the little like steam swirl again, adhered that little slice of pizza. And then I'm going to adhere my reveal wheel to my card base, which is standard A2 size card. And then in that die set, there's also a little arrow die. So I just kind of adhered that. And even though it points upward, I'm still fine with it because with this one, it doesn't matter which way you turn the reveal wheel, like same thing. So I did that. And then as a last bit of embellishment, I added some crystal drops in buttermilk, red berry and woodland green. Again, plays with the colors used on the pizza. So squeeze those onto my card fronts and people have asked because they've had trouble getting, you know, perfect circles with these. I always have my bottles straight up and down and I do a little kind of swirl motion as I'm letting go, like letting go of the bottle. So, you know, it's not adding any more to it and that kind of helps alleviate any tails. So I always do straight up and down, do a little swirl motion as I let go of the bottle. And then I tap the finished card onto any surface just to help smooth everything out. And that finishes off the crystal drops. And then I just need to let them dry overnight. So that was my card for today. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to all the supplies used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.